There we go. That's what I thought we would find today. Bass are shallow. It's been cold. But they're still in this shallow water. Look at that. How pretty. Classic fall pattern. Right here. Oh, don't you throw that. That water's cold. Fishing that double willow leaf war eagle blade. Nice chunky little large mouth in about a foot of water. Where I'm throwing is up into some cover, some brush. And I made several casts. They didn't immediately grab a hold of it when it made I've made several passes right there. So you go back. But the thing is, is I believe that this cold front that we've had got them tight to cover we got a real bluebird sky day and uh wind and the wind's gonna drift me around so we can face the sun which is not what i wanted to do so i'm gonna take advantage of it and try the other this other little pocket over here that's got some a little bit of brush in it now that first, that first bite, I made several passes in an area oh, 10, 15 feet wide, but where my bite came was right as it passed over a little lay down or a piece of small brush pile in the water. So sometimes when you've got bluebird skies, high pressure, the, the slightest bit of cover that is available they'll just stick to it like glue now I've just thrown right next to another piece but I didn't make such a great cast it made a lot of noise when it hit the water which I'm I'm not proud of a cast like that I like to see if I can do it gently lay that thing in there so that the fish all don't scatter immediately and try to grab another bite out from some brush Wiggle that thing back and forth, drop it, pump it, get it to do some different stuff. Throw it off, out, away from the brush, but it's still in proximity to where the brush pile is. There was a good cast. That's right past the brush. It's got to come back in the right strike zone well I made several casts the wind kicked me off my first pile where I had my actually caught my fish now it's going to drift me back to where I can make a cast at it so I'm going to put a jig in the area just to see if we've got some more fish hanging close to the cover. That may have been just an aggressive fish that darted out and grabbed that spinnerbait. Spinnerbait's a wonderful, wonderful search bait. It's a good all-around bait. Many people don't utilize it all year long but I do I've caught well matter of fact last year I've caught more five pounders four and five pounders uh, on a spinner bait than I did anything else and that was during a lot colder weather than what we're having now So I want to drop this jig and as the wind just sort of buffets me around, I'm going to aim at whichever brush pile it hits, I get to throw at. Now it's going to try to spin me completely around. 
and just try to pull one out, one more out before I move. Because I know if there's one fish around structure that's that shallow, there has to be more. That don't mean they'll all run out and grab a, a spinnerbait. They may not be aggressive enough for that. But a jig is an easy meal. They can run out and grab. They think that's a crawfish or a little frog on the bottom. And many, many times they will run out and grab that because they don't have to spend a lot of energy to get it. There was a fish. I'm going to ease my anchor back out where I can cover this a little more thoroughly. We had at least one aggressive bite right there on that little stretch. But he didn't get the hook, so he could have he could have hit or swiped at the blade or grab the back of the skirt or anything but at least it was a bite both of my bites now one fish on a jig on a excuse me one fish on a spinnerbait and one bite on a spinnerbait and i have thrown multiple casts with a jig which is much slower and they haven't seemed to got after it at all. I don't think I've even had a bite on the jig yet. Which is a little odd for fall fishing. They they usually will get up will really get after a jig in the fall. This may not be quite cool enough yet. After a cool night last night in the low thirties, it's already up pushing sixty degrees and I'm a little overdressed right now. This water temp's nice and cool, but it has to have probably warmed up five, six, seven degrees already from the early this morning, I'm sure. So, once it becomes late fall, which it is, um, on toward early winter, into the winter, a lot of times I won't even go to the lake until 9, 30, 10 in the morning and fish the middle section of the day. I believe that's when the fish are most active. You know, sometimes you have periods of activity uh, different times of day and night, but as a general rule, the water warms up midday in the winter and, the, and uh, I like to try to find those little pockets of warmer water especially out on a big lake it, it can mean uh, a really good day or a really bad day if you find water temperature even one or two degrees warmer in one section of the lake compared to an, uh, the rest of the lake or if you can find after a rain, a warm run-in. Cold run-ins are not so great. If the rain water is warmer than the actual lake water or pond water or, or creek water, wherever you're fishing, that can be a super, super fishing spot for a few days. Many, many bass tournaments on Smith Lake, I know of for a fact, have been won where the guys will run the run-ins after a warmer rain than say 
the uh, when the when that run in is warmer than that surface temp, man, that can be just tremendous fishing. we go still on the spinnerbait could not get one even on a worm they've got to have a, a a reaction type bait seems like today he's about the same size on in here buddy oh don't wet everything I'm gonna put you back about the same size hit it pretty hard but that's number two. I try to jig. I actually try to drop drop shot uh, worm and uh, just could not get a bite. And they seem to like the flash of that double willow leaf blade today. Don't have anything in his gullet, so there's no telltale sign of what he might have just ate before that. But that's a pretty little bass right there. Uh, chunky heavy little thing he's been eating good he's not very long but he's heavy which is a really good sign for a pond um, <laughs> and uh, but what it is 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 they're just reaching out and grabbing this thing I believe they're still in shallow water both bites or both all three bites that I've had have been shallow water which I've only hooked two but it goes along with what I had really thought I would find. Uh, I, I really thought they would be shallow versus deep water. Even though we had a cold front and it's bluebird skies, I just think they're going to be suspended up around in this shallow water where the water is warmer. It's not super clear, so they're not real. I don't think they're real spooky. I think I just spooked some fish that were, I do see some fish flipping around on the surface in the area I just cast. So I know there's probably bait fish in the area, which would lead me to believe if there's bait fish, there'll be uh, predator fish as well, which will be the bass and your bigger bluegill and catfish. Maybe we can entice one more There we go. This one that decided he wanted a jig. He was by, as you can imagine, a little bit of brush in the water. Ate that Mulberry River jig with a cream ST crawl trailer. Uh, I forgot what exact color I'm using. I think it's a watermelon. Can I have that back? It's going to be a watermelon with some flake in it, some black looking flake. I forgot. I think in this sunglasses, I believe that's a watermelon. Another bite to 
third one, he's about the same size. He busted that that jig. That jig's got a little red in the red and gold flake on the head with some watermelon with some blue flake in the in the skirt and a pretty little bass. Thunked it hard. There was no doubt that was a bite. It was not soft. It wasn't heavy swimming. It was a direct hit. So that's what I like. I don't like to have to guess if I got a bite. And, and you bass fishermen out there, you know a lot of times in the winter time we'll, be, we'll have to finesse fish and and you won't know you've got a bite until your line either swims sideways or it just simply feels heavy and weird all of a sudden. But that, all three of these, or four or five bites so far today that I think I've got five total now. There's not been a doubt they have smashed it. There's not a lot of bites going on. It's like if you put it in the right place, bam, they're, they're just, they're killing it. The spinner bait's being hit really hard when they hit it, and that jig bite right there. That's why I always like a a backup a spinner bait or a jerk bait or a chatter bait or something like that for a a search type bait, and then a backup bait to maybe come in and clean up what's what's not quite as an, as aggressive uh, enough the fish that aren't just running out and eating everything or if you need to put it beside a log and let it stay in the strike zone a little longer than than a, than a spinner bait coming past it a jig or a worm man that's an excellent way to do it a suspending jerk bait you can jerk it and let it sit beside a cover like that that will work also but now that we've we got bites in this area found some aggressive fish with a spinner bait picked up one on a jig, I'm gonna move around 25, 30 more yards and set back up and try again. I'll see you when I get back. Well guys, you can see I'm in a new spot, bringing that spinner bait back out to see if we've got any aggressive fish. I'm sticking to my guns today. I'm hunting aggressive bite first. And the lethargic bite second. Oh, I caught a leaf. I don't think that counts for anything. There we go. And I am fishing very, very shallow. I'm talking about bank runners. Oh, and around the cover that grows near the bank. I think that's where all the little bait fish are gonna be stacked in there. And while the big fish may not be stacked in there, they will move in and out and feed and hopefully, I saw a fish scattered right then. Hopefully I can uh, attract another couple.
baby. Right at the boat. Look at that. You now we swapped, we swapped baits. I went with a chatterbait. And this little fella here done chased it down and inhaled it. Oh, come here. Let's get, let's get you cut loose. Oh yeah, I mean, he whopped it. That's a nice little old chunky large mouth. If I can find the hook in there with all the skirt and everything he's got going for it. I'm gonna to have to find my pliers to get get him loose. But he's a nice chunky little fish. Now that we've got him freed up, pretty good sized little fish compared to the other. He's a lot heavier than the other ones. And he uh he smashed that chatterbait, which puts out a lot more vibration than the uh than the spinnerbait, so I'm gonna ease him on the deeper side of the boat here and turn him loose. Watch him swim away to fight another day. I'll show you. He tore my little trailer off. Normally I don't run spinner baits and chatter baits with trailer hooks because I, I've just I don't know. I like the I like the f factory setup, the way the baits run without without a hook trailing behind them or extra stuff or whatever. But today I do have one on, and it made the difference. It did catch him on the trailer hook, so we will leave it on. And if I can untangle myself from this. Oh, my trailer hook nearly came off. I lost my little keeper. Uh, I don't have a little keeper to hold my trailer hook on, so I guess I won't use it. I didn't bring all my stuff, so we will, uh, we will carry on without a trailer hook. But we'll make a few more casts and see if another one wants to smash this little chatterbait. It is absolutely a beautiful day. Oh, it won't be if I run my rods up in that tree. I was gonna skirt my skirt right down this bank like I've been doing, and I realized that I've got seven and a half foot rods sticking up behind me. That might not be a good idea. Ease over, let the wind put us against the bank. There we go. Perfect. Sometimes you can use the wind to your advantage. Most of the time, if you set your anchor system up just right on a kayak or a canoe or even a regular bass boat. Some people 
they use power poles or whatever, but the old time fishermen realized the value of an anchor or at least being steady. And if you use that wind to your advantage, you can set yourself up to do good, good things even when the wind's blowing like a hurricane. <laughs> 